I would certainly say don't get carried away. Um, we, I, I was, as you know, on the side of, uh, of, of raising by 25 basis points by a quarter of a percent. I, I think, as I, as I, you know, I think our minutes say, there is a likelihood we will, you know, have to raise again. My my view, and in, in taking the view that we should only raise by 25 basis points at this point, is that I think we have to go in steps. Um, you know, we had a lot of data coming in. You know, we will we will have a lot of data coming in by the time we next meet. Uh, we'll begin to see the you know, the reception and the effect of, of, the, of the move we've made today, and it's right to, to, to take those steps gradually because there is a lot of uncertainty around at the moment. There is a lot of uncertainty in our you know in our forecast of the economy, and we've got hugely volatile energy prices at the moment. We've got an uncertain situation around us in the world, and so we need to. You know, my, my, I was strongly on the side of saying, in a world of very high uncertainty, which is what we're in at the moment. There's a strong case for sort of going step by step, and I therefore do not have a view in my head as to how many steps we'll be taking. It, it seems the market's misunderstood the level of ambiguity that you're actually putting into your commentary here. Well, I think, I don't know. I mean, markets, in a sense, of course, have to reach a view um, on what we're going to do in the future. I'm afraid we're not going to, t- <laughs> we're not going to tell them the answer because we don't know the answer at the moment. Mm. I, I think... I, I can well understand um, that a 5-4 vote um, would have conveyed a message initially that, well, they're on the way, as it were. And I would say, look, um, I think there are you know, grounds that we, you know, for saying we will, we will have to do something more. But I think the debate for me between 25 and 50 was more about how do you behave in a world of very high uncertainty, facing, of course, a very substantial inflation shock. Don't get me wrong. But you yourself said, I think, and the bank has repeated, that the causes of this inflation are not those things that the bank itself can Indeed. control. So Indeed. why increase rates at all? Because there is a very strong risk in the short term that we will get what we often call second round effects from the inflation shock that we're having, particularly coming through wage bargaining. I mean, we're seeing that in the economy. We're seeing a very high level of churn in the job market, people moving jobs much more frequently. We've got a high vacancy to unemployment ratio in the economy. Good news to the economy is that unemployment is, you know, is, is low, and actually, I'm fing- crossing my fingers, we've come through COVID, I think, you know, much better than we feared we would. But we've got these pressures in the economy. So our, you know, our action needs to be seen through that, that lens, if you like, of saying we, you know, we have to do all we can to limit these sort of follow-on second round effects. The messaging on the labour market I think was was complicated because you're obviously seeing some issue here with the participation rate and the level of public hiring. Yeah. So the market appears to be tight Mm. but actually there are people exiting for retirement purposes or yes. just deciding not to go back into the labour market yes. at this point. Do you think that we actually may be misinterpreting the tightness as down to the wrong thing? Well, it's very interesting on the question of participation. And, and by the way, the UK is not the only country that's got this, um, this, this, pat, this pattern, actually. Now, the question on participation, which, of course, is people who don't have a job, who say they're not searching for a job, um, is well, are they going to come back into the labour market or are they not? And, and I would say that's particularly an issue for older workers because we have seen a, quite a concentration of this reduction in participation amongst older workers. So the question we ask ourselves is, well, are they saying, I'm going to retire earlier than I expected to retire, but that's it? You know, I've, I've done the calculation and, and I'm going to retire. Or are they going to come back into the labour market? And particularly those who have built up savings during the COVID period, which they didn't expect to. Now, are they going to say, well, you know, I'll live off those for however long and then I'll go back into the labour market? Or are they going to say, no, that's it. I'm, you know, I've done my retirement calculation. I'm Good news, I may have some more savings to bolster that. And that's it, I'm not coming back. And that's, a, that's we don't know the answer to that question. Which is critical because even as you look at what the wage basis. settlements that you're responding to, yeah. in real terms, they are still negative. Yes. Oh, they are, yes. 
And it's also, I mean, this question about participation is also critical because we are in a context of a very tight labor market. So these movements, you know, at the edges of the labor market, people you know, coming out of participation, the increase in public sector employment, you know, these are quite critical effects on the labor market and therefore on the tightness and therefore on pay, you know, on wage bargaining. Let me finish by just asking you a question on the, on the balance sheet, because mm. obviously you've again reaffirmed the idea that once we get to 1%, then there will be active reduction, um, active QT. Well, no, we haven't, actually. Okay. Sorry to say, but what, we, what we did today was, because we've got to 50 basis points, is that we have now said we're not going to reinvest you're right that if, if and when we get to 100 basis points to 1%, but we used a different, back in August last year, we used a different, uh, different bit of language. We said we would essentially begin to consider. It's a, it's a much softer form of language. We're giving us, we're going to start considering the case. We're not committed to active sales at 1%. What we are, going to, what we are committed to is is considering the case, and obviously then we'll tell you what the answer to that is. So anybody that assumed that today's no. report meant that this was no. a predetermined path from 100 basis points has misunderstood. No, no, go back and read what we said in, in, in August. What was much more predetermined, although we did take a decision on it this week, was when we got to the point we've got to today, which is 50 basis points, that we would cease reinvestment.